Don't look up, Donald. The day of the eclipse was dark and grim for Donald Trump. We have the New York Appellate Division instantly denying Donald Trump's emergency appeal, trying to delay the Manhattan District Attorney criminal trial scheduled for April 15th. And Justice Mershon has uh, submitted to the parties the uh, jury instructions, the jury questionnaire, and the rules for jury selection. So we're ready to go to trial. Well, right before we went live a few hours ago, uh, we got that uh, ruling from the appellate division. Also, Donald Trump's stock continued to tank today. It is just a disaster of a company. I mean, losing $58 million in revenue, their independent auditor says there are substantial doubts about the company's ability to continue as a going concern. We'll break it all down. Also, Donald Trump gave a disastrous statement where he was spiking the football for overturning Roe v. Wade. He thanked the Supreme Court justices by name who overturned Roe v. Wade. But uh, then he started attacking Lindsey Graham because Donald Trump's statement was not good enough for others in the kind of MAGA Republican base. So Lindsey Graham was critical of Trump's statement for not going too far uh, or far enough in recommending a nationwide abortion ban. So now Donald Trump's attacking Lindsey Graham. Donald Trump, though, did say that all of those state law abortion bans um, he would uphold. We'll break it all down in the fallout from Donald Trump's statement. Also, the fallout from Melania Trump wanting to be Nowhere near Donald Trump. We covered this this weekend. She ditched him at Mar-a-Lago when she was supposed to receive some just bogus performative MAGA award for doing something with kids. It was ridiculous, but she didn't show up. So Donald Trump was there holding the award and celebrating as though he won. Also, she looked absolutely repulsed at that BS fundraiser event at some billionaire's home in Palm Beach that the media was just buying hook, line, and sinker. Donald Trump claiming that uh, he very conveniently raised two times as much as what President Biden actually raised and reported. The media just loves being complicit in all of Donald Trump's propaganda. Here's the thing, folks. Maybe you want to wait to actually see the financials before just uh, perpetuating the propaganda of someone who's just been found liable for fraudulently inflating valuations and who lies about every single number. And then let's go talk about some real numbers, folks, like the massive jobs report that was just issued with over 300,000 new jobs. The American economy is booming. And if you go on Fox or any of these right-wing networks, they're trying to explain why the economy booming is a bad thing for President Biden, not just Fox, but legacy media as well. But we'll just spit the facts here at the Midas Touch Network and on the Midas Touch podcast. I'm Ben Micellis. A lot of news to discuss let me bring in Brett and Jordy. You know, the MAGA Republicans folks want to be weird about everything, and every day they show what a cult it is. This is what they posted earlier. They had Donald Trump's face in front of the sun. You know, if you go and look at the mythology behind the eclipse and what the sun's supposed to represent and what Donald Trump is symbolically representing there based on what the MAGA Republicans are posting is death and destruction and chaos and famine. But Leave it to the MAGA Republicans <laughs> to not even understand what it is they're they're posting when they when they do that. Anyway, how you doing, folks? I'm doing great. Happy Eclipse Day, everybody. I I was thinking of just as a joke, kind of wearing the eclipse glasses that I have here. You look really the good. Remainder of the you show, however, they there's a reason that you're able to stare in the sun with these, and that's because it is a complete blackout, and mm. I am not able to see a single thing uh, with these on. Nevertheless. I did get to see the eclipse uh, here in California, not the full, cool, total uh, eclipse, 
that uh, th that I saw on TV in places like Texas and whatnot. But I saw the partial here with the glasses on. It was still pretty cool. Maybe not as cool as some of the other images I saw. But uh, leave it to these MAGA Republicans, right? I, I think it's interesting when they wade into like issues that are just not political at all and show how truly deranged and full of brain worms they are. And and this is just an example. And let's like reiterate here this picture that we're showing right now of the silhouette of Donald Trump's head. And and by the way, that's the silhouette of Donald Trump from uh, many years ago. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is this is not posted by like a random Twitter user. I just want to clarify. This Good is posted point. by the House Judiciary GOP. I just want to throw <laughs> that out there because I think that's an important. I think point that's a, a big fact that I missed there in the intro. <laughs> It's not just random Magadonian, right? This is the House Judiciary GOP. The entire party has become an absolutely deranged cult. And you see, and I, I feel like a lot of the folks that I, I've talked to online have, have felt it. I've certainly felt it. But as you see Trump start to collapse in the polls, just completely go the opposite direction, you see this panic just rising between Donald Trump and the Republicans, and they're just becoming even more unhinged somehow than ever. It's it's just a completely bizarre thing to see. Anyway, Jordy, what's new in your world? Can I can I take a um, potential controversial take on the Trump Always. numbers? Always. I like I like that he lies about his what what he brought in because ultimately you can't actually buy ad space with monopoly dollars and fake money and, <laughs> and you know lies no at a certain point you're going to actually have to pay real money so it's wonderful in my opinion that he goes out there and he and he lies to his republican donors he lies to the world about how much money he's bringing in because that's just they're like oh look he's sad i'm like i don't need to donate anymore look he's good he just doubled biden way to go donnie keep it up man keep it up you you keep doing you big guy i saw I somebody online say take. i actually think that's a great take because yeah. You know, President Biden has set up over 100 field offices with a focus on all of the battleground states. Donald Trump has set up zero field office. President Biden has booked reservations on ads with an emphasis on the final weeks in October, essentially blocking out all of the ability of Trump or Trump affiliated PACs from even buying ads in October. You know, these things, folks, require planning. Like, <laughs> and, and, and Donald Trump has never planned anything at all successfully in his life. As we always talk about with Trump, he's not a builder. He's been a destroyer. The way he runs his businesses, he's got his loser family members who basically bankrupt everything they touch and or commit fraud, which they were found liable for by a New York court. I'll talk about even the bond that they posted is shady AF or, or potentially even worse with they have to go to a guy named named Don Hankey, who, who runs a bonding company that doesn't even have the requisite amount in the reserves to actually cover the $175 million reduced bond. Not only that, the bond itself exceeds the capital reserves that are even held by the bonding company. So why should it be a shocker that a family-run loser operation when they take over, frankly, what used to be a sophisticated and proud Republican party, their whole thing used to be that they were very well organized, that they're not able to actually do things like book reservations. I don't know. Is it shocking that Trump, who hires Alina Haba as a lawyer, who didn't know how to admit exhibits in a trial that Trump would then have his daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, take over the RNC and they don't have the ability to even book reservations of political ads that you need to do in advance. So what? Then you get to October and they whine, right? They, they go, it's so unfair. All of the woke media is they, they, they all they only have crooked Joe Biden's ads, and we tried to book it. It's so unfair. Well, 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 all we do is <laughs> whine. Gonna say that. It's like, no, now's the time to book for October. And yes, if you had all of this money that you claim to be raising. 
And then hint, hint, media. Jordy, you like it because you're like, maybe it's eight-dimensional chess and the media just puts the number. You're not saying it like that, but it's good. Let the media put the numbers out there because let people think he has all of this money. Well, media, if he had the money, he would do the things that you're supposed to do with the money in political campaigns. So until we see the FEC reports and until we see him do things with the money that people do when they run political campaigns and not Ponzi schemes, maybe you shouldn't report the numbers that Donald Trump says as the numbers. One point, Brett, then I'll throw it to you. Whenever it comes to things that Donald Trump actually demonstrably does, whether it's sexual assault, fraud, making the statements that he sexually assaults women, um, leading an insurrection, the media always goes allegedly, purportedly, according to Trump's political opponents. But when it comes to this fundraiser, they're like, declaratively, here's what happened. Right. And I'm like, like what? Trump told you? Really? That, that That's what you're basing it on? The guy who lies about everything told you? So you're just going to print it? So so ridiculous. I, I'm sure he's being honest and truthful about this one, Ben. Let's be fair. He doesn't have he doesn't have a track record of just lying all the time. This this time, I'm pretty sure he's going to be honest. I'm obviously being sarcastic. You know, I'm, I'm going to uh, tell you guys something that's a bit of what we like to call in the business a tell. <laughs> in the business so stupid. Um, so part of the Biden strategy when they had that big event, right, with uh, Presidents Biden and f former Presidents Obama and Clinton was that they specifically had the fundraiser before the big end of quarter reporting uh, for political action committees, for campaigns, et cetera, so that they could show everybody publicly, look how much money we raised. Isn't this amazing? Look, here is the actual data of the money we raised. Donald Trump, on the other hand, part of the strategy for this big fundraiser was let's wait till that deadline passes. Let's have this event right after that deadline so mm -hmm. that we have a few months before we have to report anything. A few months so that we could say whatever the hell we want to say and people will just have to take our word for it until reports come out in months from now. And so, which I think is July is the next reporting period. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't tell you anything, if Donald Trump was confident in his numbers and was being honest and truthful about his numbers, you'd think, especially at this point where the data out there has shown that Donald Trump is getting destroyed in the fundraising, you'd think that he'd want to make a point and get it out front, right? And say, nope, nope, look at this incredible fundraise. Look at this. Look at, but no, he hit it. And I could show you the cash. Of me. Like this is the actual data that we have. Okay. When we look at the cash on hand here between team Biden, Harris, and between Donald Trump and the associated committees with Donald Trump, you have Biden Harris with $192 million cash on hand. And like Ben was saying, what are they doing with this money? They've opened up over a hundred battleground state offices. They're sending over 2 million text messages, calling over 385,000 voters. They have have a volunteer operation of more than 20,000 volunteers in swing states. What the heck is Trump doing with this money? It seems like he's spending most of it on legal fees. And this thing with the TV reservations is going to be a big thing coming into October because Donald Trump ultimately is going to try to book times on a lot of these network TV stations, especially in these swing states. And he's not going to be able to because the slots are going to be filled already. But I want to show you just at least this one example from NBC of what Ben was talking about of the media just kind of blindly believing Donald Trump. And also I want to show you the words that they were using as the event was approaching, because I think the words that they choose, I think are important in understanding what is the, how are they trying to claim this $50 million number? So here's this NBC Trump $50 million gala set to double Biden's triple president fundraiser. And look at the photo they use of like Trump. Like they want this, they want to present this strong man image of Trump so badly. It's so ridiculous. But then you dig in on this article, for example, which was earlier in the night, former president Donald Trump has secured commitments totaling $50 million for a Saturday fundraiser. Commitments. Commitments. Anybody can commit. Anybody can pledge. What I want to see, and I'll happily accept the answers if, if, if I see that money in the bank on the FEC report, 
what what's a commitment what money is in the bank over how long of a time period is this money being committed was all that money deposited in the account that night like it was at the Biden event because if not then they can't claim to have this record breaking gala it's all just 100% bs and we have no reason to ever take donald trump at his word with anything i know we're going to go soon to speak about this horrific abortion announcement that Donald Trump made mm. because his poll numbers are just spiraling out of control right now. And this is a, a major reason for it are that people understand his threat to women's reproductive health and what he's done to it. So he's trying to sort of reset what people think about him and his role in overturning Roe v. Wade. And the same thing, the media kind of takes Donald Trump's framing hook, line and sinker without actually delving deeper into what Donald Trump is saying in his videos. And not just what he's saying, because it doesn't matter what he's saying, what he is doing and what he has done. What are the actions? What are the effects of his actions? Look, I looked at the objective data from that evening that I could glean. And I saw that there were a few people who were mentioned on that invite list of billionaires who attended, but there was probably way more that I didn't see in any of the pictures out there. So you can all be like, well, sometimes these billionaires like to be secret. They leaked the list of the billionaires' names. <laughs> Let's start with that premise, okay? If they wanted to be secret, you don't leak the names. And these are people who always want to be seen at these events, who post all of the photos with the Lena Habba laughing and jumping around with everybody and, you know, and, and, and where you've got Lara Trump with the chihuahuas that she's selling. So you're saying this is the one event that they wanted to keep so secret that they publicize the invite list everywhere. Also, <laughs> we don't know who the people were who actually attended. And all of the photos look like there was not that many people who attended the event. Also, when you look at the, um, the prior donations from these billionaires, other than a few like Kelly Leffler and uh, an, an, another person or two who actually ran for office, so they gave themselves money to their campaigns, these are people who have contributed a, a lot of money, but I went through the open secret reports on them, but like their past donations to the RNC, still significant, but like 250,000, 50,000 here and there. I, I haven't seen them give, a, you know, 870,000 max outs ever. So you're telling me where the you know the waterfall if you will of where the money goes because different entities have different limits like the direct contributions are capped at a certain amount the amount that could be given to the RNC is capped at a certain amount the amount that can be given to the political action committee you're telling me that people that that billionaires want to give close to 870,000 where the bulk of it uh, say about 850,000 would go to pay for another purported billionaire's legal fees because that's where it's going. So you you're telling me that these billionaires, you know what we need to put our money to Donald Trump's legal bills. I'm just not I'm, I'm just not buying. It. <laughs> I, I, I'll be on record right now for what I think that did um, that that event did in, in hard money. It'll be hard to know because Brett, as you mentioned, commitments means that those people can trickle in the money through July. Let me give you my estimate or guess. And again, this is my opinion. We'll find out in July if I'm right. I think it was under $5 million. Donald Trump has a way of multiplying things by 10. I think it was under five. We'll see if I'm right. But um, roll the tape when, uh, when when we actually get it in um, when we get the data in July. Let me and tell you about quick, some of real, the real real quick. Also, just the last thing about this: think about the differences between the two events, the one that President Biden held and the one that Donald Trump held. Like President Biden made his essentially open to the public, right? It was streamed. Everyone saw what was going on. There were photographers there. There were clips going out like in almost real time. And then Donald Trump, what does he do? Behind closed doors with billionaires coming through. It's just so thematic of both 
of their campaigns. President Biden truly for the American people, opening up everything to everyone. And Donald Trump trying to operate behind the scenes with some shady characters. Yeah. And, and um, you know, Jordy, I did a video over the weekend with this um and I even forgot some, there's so much Trump fraud that I even forget about these things. So the, the Washington Post did a new story about Donald Trump's current osteopath, who was the, who was a member at Bedminster, who wrote this hyperbolic two paragraph or three paragraph doctor letter that says Trump's health is exceptional. He's in amazing health. You know, when it turns out this is just some dude who goes to basically Bedminster with Donald Trump. But then I forgot about Dr. Bornstein, Trump's prior doctor who passed away under mysterious circumstances in 2021, who wrote that letter in 2015 that Donald Trump would be like the healthiest person to ever hold the presidency ever and is like by far the most healthy patient he ever saw. And then it turned out, and Bornstein told this to CNN, that Donald Trump dictated to Bornstein the letter. And so Bornstein just wrote whatever Donald Trump said, and that became Donald Trump's medical letter. And then when Bornstein had told the New York Times that Donald Trump took medication for hair growth, Donald Trump like then had his bodyguard raid Bornstein's medical clinic and take all of the files from Bornstein's medical clinic. It's just another example, though, Jordan, when you unravel any type of layer right? Whether it's the building, whether it's the stock, whether it's the campaign, whether it's the medical notes, but take what Trump did, compare it to President Biden put out a six page, very detailed medical record that gave very specific data about the blood tests and about blood pressure and about medications. Like, it went through eight to 10 different types of doctors that were all summarized with very granular detail. And it's just a kind of a, a, a microcosm, or perhaps it's pretty macro, or macrocosm of the contrast here. I uh, want to remind everybody about our Patreon, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash Midas Midas touch. When we get back, I got to show some clips from Mar-a-Lago, though, where Donald Trump was like bragging about how rich he was, how Melania didn't want to be anywhere near him, how Donald Trump accepted the award on behalf of Melania. We got to talk about what happened with the appellate division rejecting uh, Donald Trump's emergency appeal to try to derail the district attorney criminal trial. Also, some of the top retired American generals and military leaders submitted a powerful amicus brief to the Supreme Court listing what a threat it is that Donald Trump wants to order the military to try to kill his political opponents. Did you ever think there would be a day where the top military leaders would need to tell the Supreme Court that a president should not allow the military to execute political opponents? That and more. Let's take our first quick break of the show. I like to cook. It's a great way to unwind after a long day, but going food shopping and getting all the ingredients can be super time consuming. I finally found a better way with Marley Spoon. This podcast is sponsored by Marley Spoon. Marley Spoon knows bland food is boring, so they created the best tasting meal kit money could buy. And with my code Midas, you could get up to 25 free meals. With Marley Spoon, you could choose from over 100 delicious recipes every week, from Cajun spiced chicken to poached salmon to butternut squash gnocchi to a vegan burrito bowl. My favorite recent meal from Marley Spoon was their Cajun Spiced Chicken. It is absolutely incredible. And many of the recipes are completely customizable. Whether you're looking for vegetarian meals, family-friendly dishes, or low-carb options, Marley Spoon has the food you want to eat. Marley Spoon even has an in-house registered dietitian who actually assesses every recipe so it takes the guesswork out of eating healthy. There's something really rewarding about cooking food yourself and it tasting amazing versus doing expensive, unhealthy takeout. Marley Spoon also saves you for making that extra grocery haul with their online market of pantry essentials. You could shop their selection of 125 plus items like seasonal produce, ready to heat options, meal shortcuts, extra proteins, and handy snacks and easily add them to your next Marley Spoon box. With meal planning and food shopping taken care of, making delicious food at home has finally become effortless. Plus, with Marley Spoon, you aren't locked in long term. Marley Spoon's flexible subscription allows you to edit, 
pause or cancel your boxes anytime. So experience the most personalized meal kit today with Marley Spoon. Head to marleyspoon.com slash offer slash Midas and use code Midas, that's M-E-I-D-A-S, for up to 25 free meals. You heard me right. Up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. One last time, that's marleyspoon.com slash offer slash Midas for up to 25 free meals. And make sure you use my promo code Midas, M-E-I-D-A-S, so they know that I sent you. You all know I love math, right? So let's do some quick math. The less your business spends on operations, on multiple systems, on delivering your product or service, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So to reduce the headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle, as we did at Midas Touch. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. Truth is golden. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required, accessed from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple system because you've got one unified business management suite. You improve efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Slash it. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move, including ours. So do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite business need to operate as efficiently as possible so you'd be wise to find proven ways to cut costs and boost performance at the same time. Now, through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. So head to netsuite.com slash Midas. That's N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com slash Midas. One more time, it's netsuite.com slash Midas. Shout out our sponsors, y'all. Shout them out. I mean, links in the description of audio and both the YouTube. And it's just like Marley Spoon, for example, giving away 25 free meals. I don't even know how they could do that. So definitely take advantage of that offer. Use our promo code. It's unbelievable. And NetSuite, that offer is coming. It's crazy. And then NetSuite, you know, their incredible offer that's through April 15th. So we're getting close there. Make sure you click the links right now. Click them right now. Well, as you're watching the pod, check them out. Brett, tell us about uh, the leaked footage from Mar-a-Lago and Donald Trump accepting the award on Melania's behalf. The whole thing is is so weird. Like, honestly, it just, it gets weirder by the day. I know I say it every time, but it really it gets weirder and weirder and weirder. But it's all so on brand for Donald Trump. And these are things that Donald Trump has been very overt with the way that he is running his campaign and his vision for the United States of America. I I believe we talked about this maybe on the the previous uh, show here, but Donald Trump is specifically running on the idea that America should not be a multicultural country, that America should be a country for uh, wealthy white people only, and that other people are not welcome here. He's running on an explicitly um, Christian nationalist stance dance pushing this Project 2025 agenda um, that has been outlined by these right-wing groups as uh, their intentions for the country, which involve these total abortion bans in in the country and basically firing everybody who works in the government, replacing them with Trump sycophants. It's really disturbing stuff. And Trump behind closed doors, um, he asked the millionaire slash billionaire attendees at this fundraiser, if you want to call at that. He goes, why aren't people immigrating to this country from, quote, nice countries like, quote, Denmark or Switzerland? Do we have any people coming in from Denmark? How about Switzerland? How about Norway? And he also suggested that the attendees at his event were temporarily safe from undocumented immigrants nearby. He kept ranting about migrants entering the United States. It's just all fear-mongering nonstop. He was telling the attendees, there are people coming in from prisons and jails. They're coming in from unbelievable places and countries, countries that are a disaster. I mean, do you remember when Trump, while he was president, uh, I believe he was referring to African countries at the time and called them shithole countries? I mean, that was Donald Trump saying out loud, uh, you know, his views on any sort of non-white country. And we're seeing that, you know, that that's become such a central part of Donald Trump's campaign here. And one of the other things that we know about Donald Trump's campaign, and 
Frankly, his only accomplishment, if you want to call it that, is Donald Trump is running on rich people. I want to make you richer. I don't care about the working class of this country. I don't care about anybody else. But if you are wealthy in this country, I want to lower your taxes and make things better for you. And there was leaked footage from this event in Mar-a-Lago of him openly saying that. Here's the clip. You're all wealthy people. I know a lot of you come there so much money. They can give you so much money. Well, you know, what we did, the largest tax cut in the history of the United States, the largest tax cuts in history. Think of it. Our military. I mean, Republicans used to hide that that was like their agenda. At least Donald Trump is saying it out loud, saying, I gave you the greatest tax cuts in history and I'm going to do it again. He just wants to continue to increase the wealth disparity in the country. And it really is why, quite frankly, you see all these billionaires right now freaking out about the idea of a second Biden term, because the whole concept of Bidenomics is growing the economy from the bottom up and the middle out which is the antithesis of this idea, this failed idea of trickle-down economics that has never worked in this country, that has only widened the wealth gap, and what Donald Trump wants to continue to implement from the Republican Party and as president. It's a complete failure, and he wants to double down. And Donald Trump also, you know, he, he was... There was this bizarre thing where, you know, he was with Melania that night at the uh, at that event and Melania looked like she wanted nothing to do with him. I know Ben did uh, at least one video on this the other day and he kept trying to like reach for her hand. She kept like pushing away his hand. He, he tried to like grab onto her finger at one point and she like pulled away. It was one of the most awkward displays ever. Um, but then there was this other event where. There's somebody, Ben, and I'm not even sure who it was, but they were trying to give Melania Trump some sort of award, uh, the the Child Advocacy Award. What is she? Doing? <laughs> what like they just make? They just make it's like probably you know it's like the award that Donald Trump won as like best golfer in history at Mar-a-Lago. They just make up awards to give each other. But Melania this specific not- award, though, that just so you know the pathology, <laughs> what's going on behind the scenes here, and how like just disgusting and weird and sick these people are. So they've been promising that Milani was going to show up at these events. And that one had kind of Carrie Lake and a lot of other people there. So Trump wanted to try to get Milani in a show. So his thought was, if you gave her an award for helping the children, that that she would show up. That's the sick pathology behind it. And give her an award for child advocacy. That's why it's like, what are you even talking about? And like, you know, I won't do the Melania accent for a lot of reasons, but like, you know, behind the scenes, she was basically saying like, I'm not showing up. You could, you could imagine the Melania accent as I say this. I'm I'm not going to do that. Let, let's show the footage without you doing the accent. Uh, let, let's show the footage. Of let's show the Donald. footage without you getting canceled. <laughs> let's show the foot. Let's show the footage of. <laughs> let's show the footage of uh, Melania. Doing a Melania Trump. accent would actually not get me canceled. Just to be I don't. Clear. I, I agree. No, I, I'm no, just kidding. I, I'm I just. just with it. I just think it's. I, 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 I don't know, know where it's gonna go though. Like it sounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In my head, the accent's perfect. It's probably. A I just don't. I, I just don't think it's something we need to experiment with on this episode. Um, but maybe in a future episode, we'll see. We'll see. You know? um, but I, here, here's the moment where Melania Trump wins an award and she's not there to accept it, and the whole thing just so freaking so weird, man. Here it is. on board. We want to take this opportunity. I know my uh, first lady couldn't get here, but we want to give Melania Trump. The Child Advocacy Award, because she said she just she did so much for children when she was the first lady. So, sir, this is from Melania's petition. Please make your way to the. He took the Trump. award like he won. Trump held the award and actually Trump like he won. Trump took the award. Melania is nowhere to be. The whole thing is. It's so uh, his weird. reactions too. It's not human reactions. Let's, I just want to be clear about that. Like, do you guys remember in the first Men in Black when when that alien takes over somebody's body, like the person's body, and they like they like stretch their skin and they just look like an alien, like in a human's body? What was, what the hell was Trump doing? There? He grabs the guy forward first of all, like in the most <laughs> bizarre handshake, grabs him forward, and then he goes, "Don't go everybody." Like these are like darn human reactions. I would just like to ask the guy, like on the spot. 
okay, give me one example. All the things she did for children. Give me one example. One example. I want, I want one example. One award. One example, and then, <laughs> then we'll okay the award. Go. Be, no, be best? Is, is that what we're talking about? Like, what are, we ta- what are we talking about here? All I remember was the audio recording of her. Where should I do the accent? Should I take out the where she goes? We're okay on the accent. We're good on the we're good on the accent. Where she basically says, F, she goes like F the children. I don't give a F about the children, and I hate effing Christmas. That was like the audio <laughs> recording that uh, that we have of her. Any of and it's deranged people, man, just deranged. It's 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 really really wild, you know. But again, the House Judiciary GOP is posting photos of Donald Trump as the eclipse. I mean, <laughs> the strangest group of people. That's why I, that's why I always go. I'm like, yo, this, a lot of this show, you know, I would say 90% of the show and the network, I actually think is not political at all. And I, and it's such a wild concept to think that I don't view Midas as a political thing. <laughs> and people go, that's the craziest thing. You, you cover politics. I go, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of it's just like pointing out things that I think shouldn't be political, like things that I just look at and I'm like repulsed by or think is so weird or so deranged or talking about court cases or talking about objective fraud. And I'll, I'll know, say and, this, Ben, if, if this were like, uh, you know, Obama Romney sort of situation, it'd be a much different show. <laughs> a much different program you'd be watching here um but it's not the times we're in folks we're <laughs> dealing with some weird creepy dangerous stuff um and uh and it's getting weirder and creepier and more dangerous is for sure ben last chance you want to do the accent no okay <laughs> <we can> move on <laughs> all right so let, let, let let's give some court update <laughs> Donald Trump was trying to stay or pause the uh, Manhattan District Attorney criminal case scheduled for April 15th. Uh, The appellate division in New York denied and uh, rejected that. This is at the same time that Justice Mershon, uh, who's presiding over the Manhattan District Attorney case, who Donald Trump continues to attack justice Mershon's daughter. He's filed another recusal motion against Justice Mershon. An identical one basically was rejected several months ago at the outset of the case. Mershon is sending uh, instructions about jury selection, a jury questionnaire, and how the parties need to deal uh, with the um, you know with the jury, the rules about the jury, the anonymity of the jury from the public, the access that the lawyers will have to the jurors' addresses, not Donald Trump. And um, so we're moving forward, you know, we're moving forward with that trial. Donald Trump's trying to do everything he can to derail that. You know, we'll, we'll keep you posted every step of the way. Um, but, you know, I think the appellate division is also, um, you know, they, they've already been screwed by Donald Trump. Their decision screwed over by Donald Trump. Trump's made the New York Appellate Division look like total fools, right? The New York Appellate Division, based on Donald Trump's word, reduced the bond obligations in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case, another case, from 464 to $175 million, gave Donald Trump 10 days to find a surety company. And the surety company Donald Trump found is not compliant with the New York laws on having the appropriate amount of reserves to even be a surety in the first place. The bond is more than the underlying, than than the amount that they have in reserves. Also, you have this guy, Don Hankey, who's a buddy of Donald Trump, who runs the surety company. He's been like, his name's name's Mr. Hankey. Hankey, Hankey's been giving interviews with like anybody. I think he's been giving interviews with ProPublica and Axios, and, and I think he's been giving all of these interviews and basically saying, "Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure I know like the collateral that Trump's pledging. I don't know. Maybe it's from Trump. Maybe it's from his supporters. What do you mean you don't know where the collateral is? Isn't there anti-money laundering rules that like you're ob- obligated to know what your collateral is? Maybe it's money in like a brokerage account. I don't really know. It could be from supporters. I mean, how absurd can you <laughs> absurd can you get right there? 
Trumpian level absurd. And then today, Trump stock further crashing. At times, it was down more than uh, 10% today. So much of the value has been, uh, you know, there, it's really no value to, to, to begin with, I should basically say that. But it's paper value, you know, since the pump. Now, I think, in my opinion, on the dump stage, and Trump's a big dump, <laughs> um, you know, is, is, you know, there are so many people. So what I said two years ago, I was warning about this exact scenario just go back to the videos where i was saying this is going to screw up retail investors so badly all you have to do is look at the balance sheet for trump media 58 million dollars in losses 4.1 million dollars in annual revenue of which 750,000 was paid to devin nunes and a 600,000 retention bonus Donald Trump also paid uh, his campaign guy and former deputy chief of staff, Dan Scavino, $220,000 with a $2.2 million promissory note. Cash Patel got like $120,000. Mind you, on $4.1 million in revenue and $58 million in losses. Um, and so we'll continue to, Jordy, you've been writing some great articles, uh, really in the weeds that explains the kind of battle between the short squeezers and the short sellers. And, um, you know, and now it seems to be a lot, a lot of just the sellers versus the squeezers. Um, and uh, we'll keep, you know, it seems like every day there's going to be new developments there. By the way, an issue that I think we're going to see percolate soon is as Donald Trump posts about the says thing, before the big recent crash, Donald Trump went on his social media and said how strong and stable and steady Trump media is. Statements like that would be con would be considered under securities regulation as material, false, and misleading statements. So if a class action securities lawyer, I mean, this is my opinion, of course, as someone who knows this space, but just hypothetically, if a class action securities lawyer was able to identify a shareholder, a single shareholder, so they didn't have to be brought by the SEC, but it could, who relied on Donald Trump's statements when Trump said the company was strong, purchased shares, Trump could be individually responsible and have his board of directors individually responsible for the billions of dollars for the delta in the amount it was trading at plus the loss. And that's how you would calculate the damages. Now, normally, billion dollar companies would have DNO insurance that would cover these types of things. But I have a little hanky inkling that Donald Trump does not have the appropriate director and officer um, insurance policy that would cover potentially hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars in losses. I expect, my opinion, but I'd expect to see some shareholder uh, lawsuits and derivative cases being brought against Trump media uh, soon. And that brings me, though, also to this um, uh, amicus brief that was brought by these top military generals. Um, and they all joined together some, you know, top former leaders with top positions. Um, they're, they're retired in the military. You know, and they had to actually address Donald Trump's statements before the Supreme Court that he can kill his political enemies, that he could order SEAL Team 6 to do that, and he should get absolute immunity. I, I never thought as an American citizen I'd have to read something like this, but this is from uh, the retired military generals. Of particular concern is the potential adverse impact of presidential immunity on the principle of military obedience to civil authority, the foundation of our civil military relations since the inception of the Republic. Allowing a president to issue orders requiring subordinates to commit criminal acts or omissions would wreak havoc on the military chain of command and result in an erosion of confidence in the legality of presidential orders. It would also create the potential for disparate interpretations of the duty to obey orders, thereby risking military discipline. While the duty of obedience does not extend to patently illegal orders, an order issued by the president himself would exert a powerful, grab 
gravitational pull, and thus even if of dubious legality would create uncertainty in the ranks. Holding everyone in the chain of command, including the president, to the same principles of accountability under the criminal laws of the United States is essential for assuring the legality of military orders and for providing the reassurance for all levels of the chain of command of that legality. Just wow. think about those chilling words that retired former military generals had to say, Brett. No, it's absolutely, I'm, I'm glad they're sounding the alarm. And, you know, a, a, as we get closer to these elections, I think, you know, we'll continue to be reminded of the stakes of these elections. And so I think it's important that these military leaders speak up when Donald Trump is pushing such a preposterous uh, argument that he has full immunity to do whatever he wants, including send in SEAL Team 6 to kill his political opponents. I mean, it's just gotten so beyond beyond the pale of anything. And as we head towards these November elections, and as we see all of these court cases take shape, I think one of the things that we all need to realize, uh, not even necessarily in the back of our minds, but in the front of our minds, as we see the actions that Donald Trump takes and his behavior go even more and more off the rails, is Donald Trump is quite literally running for his life here in these elections. Donald Trump loses these elections. That is the last amount of kind of protection he could possibly have from the law. A loss for Donald Trump in these elections is not only losing an election, it's essentially losing his freedom, his entire life as he knows it, because he is going to have to finally face the consequences of his actions, whether that's in state court and or federal court. There is nothing stopping it once these elections end, if and when he loses. If that's not motivation enough, by the way, to vote against the guy, then I don't know what is. But I, you know, that's why we're going to see him continue to lash out. That's why we're going to see this behavior get crazier by the day, because Trump himself knows that his freedom is on the line. Well, I'll give you extra motivation right now. This is the statement that Donald Trump put out this morning on reproductive rights. He made a video of himself. Let me just show you this portion of what Donald Trump had to say, taking credit for ending reproductive rights for women. Play this clip. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. First off, factually, utterly, despicably false. That's just not true, and I want to say that. Donald Trump almost cut that as if it were an ad for President Biden. I mean, it's, it's almost like at the end of it, you would go, end <laughs> scene. Biden. I mean, Donald or, Trump I'm President Biden, emphasis. and I approve this message. <laughs> exactly. I ended Roe v. Wade. Roe, let me be clear, Roe v. Wade. I want to talk about Donald Trump's statement, the fallout from it. Donald Trump now attacking Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, who's basically just destroyed any ounce of credibility he's ever had, just being mocked now by Donald Trump after any shred of principles that Lindsey Graham had has, has dissolved. I mean, think about where Lindsey Graham will be in the history books and utter uh, mm. complete and total embarrassment. We'll talk about that and more. Let's take our last quick break of the show. We've talked about sustainable products here before, and I've been making a concerted effort to try and only use products that are toxin-free, all natural, and better for the environment. Generally, I would say that it's most important to make these swaps in the kitchen. That's where so many of the products that we use can be wrapped in plastics. And it's especially important to use all natural products when we're cleaning around our food. That's why I've been so excited to make the switch to Reels' new bamboo paper towel. There it is right there. Just like all of Reels' products, the paper towels are free of inks, dyes, and BPAs and are 100% tree-free and all packaging is plastic-free, even down to the tape on the box. For too long, 
The sustainable options for paper towels were a poor substitute. They were usually flimsy, unabsorbent, and felt like cheap paper towels you might find in a public restroom. Gross. Reel's new bamboo paper towels are the first truly premium sustainable paper towels and are up to 50% thicker and more absorbent than the leading sustainable brand. The sheets are two-ply for extra absorbency, and thanks to the strength of bamboo, they can hold up to the toughest messes. And while other conventional tree-based options are wrapped in plastic in the grocery aisle, Real Paper's packaging is plastic-free, compostable, and offers free shipping on all orders. When I use Real, it doesn't feel like I'm sacrificing something to help the earth. What up, earth? In fact, it feels like an upgrade from the paper towels I traditionally use. Real Paper is available in easy, hassle-free subscriptions or for one-time purchase on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with free shipping and 100% recyclable plastic-free packaging. If you head to realpaper.com slash Midas and sign up for a subscription using our code Midas at checkout, you'll automatically get 30% off your first order and free shipping. That's R-E-E-L. P-A-P-E-R dot com slash Midas and enter the promo code Midas to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. So let's give Reels tree-free paper a try. Reel is a paper for the planet. That's realpaper.com slash Midas. Ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, we've been there too, but here's a breath of fresh air Fume, it's not about giving up, it's about switching up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I tried fume, it was way more flavorful than I thought, and it feels very fresh. The look and feel of Fume is very sleek, it's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Plus, Fume's just released a magnetic stand for your Fume, so there's no more losing it around the house. It's built with fidgeting in mind. You can spin your Fume around and around and around it. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash Midas, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash Midas and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when you use our code Midas to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Go to tryfume.com slash Midas and use our code Midas. Welcome back. We are live on the Midas Touch podcast. Brett and Jordy uh here with me right now uh jordy great sponsors thank you to our pro democracy sponsors who make this show possible the discount codes are in the description below uh, let, let's talk about donald trump's statement that he made today it is absurd and offensive that he's even making a statement on women's reproductive rights in the first place like dude no just shut the F up. Like this is not an area where you and the government should just be in period. Like I want to make that, especially you. Donald you don't think that you don't think this guy should be involved in women's healthcare decisions. Yeah. I don't think this guy should be involved in it. As I, I posted uh, what, before he was giving the statement, I said, Donald Trump, the man found liable for sexual assault who bragged on tape about sexually assaulting women who said women should be punished for having an abortion, who appointed Supreme Court justices to overturn Roe v. Wade, and who has consistently bragged about Roe being overturned and said he would appoint similar justices in the future, would now like to make a PR announcement to tell women his views about reproductive rights that he wants to impose on them that he has already taken away as he sees his poll numbers slipping away. And Donald Trump's statement was, you know, 
pissing everybody off. Even kind of right wing MAGA people thought he didn't go far enough by requiring a national abortion ban. So you had, you know, Lindsey Graham saying, well, no, 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 the Republicans, what are you talking about? We want national abortion bans. You had like Rand Paul's right hand man said, this is the worst statement that was ever issued by any re Republican, you know, Republican leader. But Donald Trump was endorsing the state law abortion bans, the most egregious and despicable ones. And again, this should not be an area where Donald Trump and Matt Gates and Jim Jordan or anyone should be telling women how to make reproductive decisions over their body, period, full stop. Let me just show you these clips again. This was Donald Trump taking credit for ending abortion rights. Let's just play this clip one more time. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. And then Donald Trump thanks the Supreme Court justices by name who overturned Roe. Play the clip. Hold on one second. Let's play the other one first, where he talks about these state bans across the country. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. And then let me show you a flashback where Donald Trump said that there should be punishment for women. This was leading to the 2016 election. Let's play that clip. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Here's a statement by President Biden's campaign, quote, Trump is scrambling. He's worried that since he's the one responsible for overturning Roe, the, voter, the voters will hold him accountable in 2024. Well, I have news for Donald Trump. They will. President Biden put out a rapid response reaction video on his iPhone. Let's play that clip. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Donald Trump just endorsed every single state ban on reproductive care nationwide. All across the country, women are being turned away from emergency rooms or being forced to travel hundreds of miles or ask a judge just to get the basic care they need. That's Donald Trump's vision for this country. He said it himself. He punished women who seek out the care they need. If MAGA Republicans put a federal ban on his desk, he'd sign it. Donald Trump is the reason Rose ended. If you reelect me, I'll be the reason why it's restored. Powerful video right there, but even more powerful than that, this new Biden ad that frankly brought tears to my eyes when I saw this. It shows the story of a couple, Josh and Amanda, who were expecting their first baby before Amanda had a miscarriage at 18 weeks. Amanda was then denied the standard medical care to prevent infection, which is an abortion, is the standard medical care. Doctors were forced to send her home. Three days later, Amanda was in the ICO, the ICU with sepsis. She almost died twice. The infection caused so much damage. Amanda may never be able to get pregnant again. And Amanda's story is a story we're hearing and you're hearing across the country now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned and women have been deprived of the reproductive rights that they once had. Let's play this clip that's part of President Biden campaign's $30 million ad buy. Let's play it. So this is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is the blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. It's okay. No. <laughs> 
I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. So when Donald Trump is there with his stupid accordion hands celebrating that he was the one who overturned Roe v. Wade, that is the consequence of Donald Trump. And, um, you know, look, I'm glad that President Biden is putting ads so powerful out like that. And my my heart goes out to uh, that family and what they've had to endure. And my heart goes out to families across um, the country. And my heart goes out to women whose reproductive rights have been taken away by these MAGA Republicans. And, um, you know, I, I, I teach a course at uh, USC. I teach law school in the fall and undergrad in the spring. And when I talk about constitutional law with, you know, students who are between the ages of, you know, 18 and, and, 20, and 21, the fact that they have less rights, significantly less rights than my parents have, and even that my grandparents had, is something that always, you know, sits with me and sticks with me and just makes me, you know, so horrified. And, you know, I, I often ask the students when we're going through civil rights legislation and we talk about the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, Title IX, and I ask the students, you know, about major pieces of legislation that were passed in the 60s and the 70s. In 2024, I said, do you think this law would be able to be passed today? Raise your hand. My class is over 60 students. Um, raise your hand if you think this law could be passed today, right now, um, in the current climate with the way MAGA Republicans are. I don't say MAGA Republicans. And, and not a single student raises their hand because they think that and they know that what the what these republicans have done to them and what how their rights have, you know have been taken away horrific stuff horrific stuff i also want to show this this is what donald oh, let me show you some of donald trump's posts this is what he's saying about lindsey graham lindsey graham criticized donald trump's statement for not going far enough trump wrote i blame myself for lindsey graham because the only reason he won in the great state of south carolina is because i endorsed him and there's a bunch of other posts where he's just relentlessly bashing Lindsey Graham right now. But there, there was this other post that also shows to me the failure of the media. You know, we we covered it, of course, on the Midas Touch Network on our website. You know, we posted about it. But you know, Donald Trump posted this video called Trump Virtues, and it has this like Orwellian narration. Where and, and and for those watching on screen, for those who are listening on audio, let me just show you, you know, some of the stuff that it talks about. It talks about America's enemies, and when it's talking about American enemies, the video flashes former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. And the video talks about how uh, the fact that Trump is compared to Hitler gives hope because it shows that Trump is leading a counter-revolution against the deep state. It has this eerie voice that says things like, Donald Trump loves you. You must love Donald Trump. When Donald Trump commands you to fight, the Trump supporters are ready to fight. Donald Trump knows who his enemies are. They are the enemies from within. They are Americans. And Donald Trump, with your support, will take them down. People compare Donald Trump to Hitler, but that is not a reason to fear. That is a reason for hope, for Donald Trump will lead the counter-revolution against his enemies, and you will be a part of it. It's an eight-minute video. Do we have a clip of it just so you can be like, Ben, what the heck? Donald Trump posted this. If we've got a clip of it, we'll just show a portion of it. We'll do like 30 seconds. We shouldn't much care whether our commander-in-chief is a real conservative, whether he is a role model for children, or says lots of silly things, or whether he is modest or dignified. What we should care about is whether he knows we are in a war, knows who the enemy is, and knows how to win. Trump does. I remember, and the enemy is you.
the enemy is our fellow Americans. That's who he says the enemy. The enemy is not people, uh, foreign actors who want to destroy the country. The enemy are other Americans. And his entire campaign is based on otherizing Americans and declaring anybody who is not loyal to him personally, not the United States of America, but to Donald Trump, an enemy of the country who needs to be eradicated. That's Donald. That's Donald Trump's platform, and he's very open about it. And if that's not sounding the alarms right now, wherever you are listening to this, then I don't know what possibly could sound the alarms. Donald Trump, you know, even on the row thing, right? It's all about control. He just wants complete control over the American people, and he just wants to win elections at all costs. And as you even see the like the language that he uses about his statement, he's very open also that he's trying to BS the public into just winning elections, that nothing he says has any meaning whatsoever. We shouldn't much care. Didn't mean to play that. And but that's why <laughs> scared me. That's why, though, like that's why we can't take anything that he says at face value. That's why we have to look at his actions and see which of his messages align with his actual actions that he's mm -hmm. doing. When you see a video like that, it aligns with everything else that he has done up until this point. When you see Donald Trump speak on a row, what I don't want to see are headlines like Donald Trump says that he's not going to endorse a federal abortion ban because that's not what he said. It's not what he said at all. He actually didn't even wade into the topic on if a federal abortion ban came on his desk, would he or would he not sign it? And not a lot of people have, I don't even think, asked him that question. And when they do ask him, he just kind of uh, sidesteps the question every single time. But we can look at his actions, like I was saying, right? We could look at his embrace of this Project 2025, which aligns with what that vert, weird virtues video was that we just played, which aligns with what Donald Trump has been doing by overturning Roe v. Wade. We can look at Donald Trump's actions with Roe as he is the guy who is openly admitting that he is the one responsible for the destruction of reproductive rights in this country and all the things that come with it, right? The ending of IVF, at least temporarily in Alabama, women fleeing their states to get abortions, that 10-year-old who had to leave Ohio to get an abortion so she wouldn't have to have her race this baby baby like everything trump says in, the, in these videos are often lies so you have to look at the underlying actions behind them to get to what is the actual truth oh all legal scholars believe in uh that roe was a bad decision that's not a true statement at all this is this is not a true statement at all and what i've noticed as well are the people who are taking trump's side the way they're trying to justify kind of this half measure of his where he's trying to sort of appease everybody are by saying the quiet part out loud. Hey, I, I've seen so many comments like this online today that are basically summed up like, hey, I know Trump's not saying his position on if he would sign that federal abortion ban, but he needs to play kind of both sides here so he could get into power. And once he comes into power, we crush them. That's what we do. We got to get the power first. And once we get the power, it's game over for abortion. I've seen comments like that all day long. Like that, that's, that's their end goal here. So all I'm saying is don't be fooled by whatever the heck that was. And the statement's horrific as is. And I think we see already Donald Trump getting backlash on all fronts, whether it's from Lindsey Graham, from Mike Pence, a, lo a lot of people in the evangelical community, a lot of those former DeSantis supporters are disgusted uh, by Trump's statements. And so, you know, we're just seeing that being reflected now and we're seeing this further division of the party. And I think Donald Trump's big announcement today that he thought was going to course correct his position on abortion actually led to more division within his own party and also reminded the rest of the country just how damaging mm -hmm. he has been to the freedoms of Americans. But when you look at what President Biden's doing, it tells a, a much different story, folks. What President Biden's doing is you see actually like positive things for the American people. We speak about that whiplash constantly on the show of going from this dark, dystopian vision of Donald Trump and everything that he wants to do to the country, destroy fe uh, uh, fellow Americans, enact retribution on fellow Americans, stick it to the working class, give all the tax breaks to the wealthiest in our country. And then we look at what's happening in President Biden's America and we see 
why this, this billionaire class, why these people who support Donald Trump are doing it in a lot of ways. Because what are we seeing? Jobs, 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 jobs to the middle class. On Friday, we got another monthly jobs report that again, surprise, surprise, exceeded the expectations of all the economists. We added 303,000 jobs in March, exceeding the 205,000 expectation. In addition, the unemployment rate fell to 3.8%, which was where the expectations were. Unemployment was at 3.9. In February, wages have increased 4.1% over the past year. That's well above the 3.2% rate of inflation over the past year. The U.S. is now at 26 consecutive months of sub 4% unemployment. That's the longest stretch of sub 4% unemployment since the late 1960s. Also, we're not done yet. America has now had 39 straight months of consistent job growth, which represents the fifth strongest, stre longest stretch in our nation's history. We're now at over 15.2 million jobs added since President Biden took office. 800,000 of those are new manufacturing jobs. And you see this, this different economy building. And for the first time, we actually are seeing uh, even if it's ever so tiny, the closing of that wealth gap. And that's why we see all these wealthy people freaking out. Why else are we seeing them freaking out? Because President Biden is also delivering on his promise for student debt relief for people who have been burdened with student debt through these predatory practices. There was another announcement today, and it's this one's going to impact, by the time it's all said and done with all President Biden's plans, 30 million American borrowers. I, you know, I, I, I could go through kind of point by point of what the new plan does, but President Biden actually spoke about it today. I'll just let you hear it from him directly. Today, I'm proud to announce five major actions to continue to relieve student debt for more than 30 million Americans since this, I started my administration. First, my administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now, owes more now than when they started paying the loan. That makes, that's a big difference. And for low and middle class families enrolled in my SAVE program, we'll cancel all of your interest, all of your interest. And second, we plan to cancel student debt for borrowers who still owe student loans, even though they started repaying them more than two decades ago. Folks, third, we plan to cancel debt for about two million borrowers who would be eligible for debt forgiveness through the SAVE program, public service loan forgiveness, or other debt canceling programs, but are not enrolled in these programs. Some of you are only finding out after the fact, you're, as you're a teacher, a firefighter, a cop, that you qualify, but you just didn't know about it before. And now people are, but you're eligible no matter how long it's been, you've been out of the program. Fourth, we plan to cancel debt for borrowers who the Department of Education determines were cheated by universities that left students in unaffordable loans and delivered little in benefits to students. And you know, you know one of those, you know one of those colleges was closed. I won't mention. It. And finally, the Department of Education will propose a new rule to cancel student debt for Americans facing financial hardships, from child care to health care, to prevent them from paying back their loans. And over the coming months, the Department of Education will propose and then implement these plans. And starting this fall. We plan to deliver up to $20,000 in interest relief to over 20 million borrowers and full forgiveness for millions more. And I'll just add, if, if you want to see how those policies may affect you, if you have a uh, student debt, then you're hoping for relief, go to the, the they have a website, studentaid.gov slash debt relief. You could go to, um, you could see if you're eligible, you could see how these plans may impact you. You know, I, I know a number of people who have been positively impacted by these policies. And, you know, I, I, I don't think if you haven't experienced it yourself, I think there are a lot of people who don't realize just how predatory and how horrific these loans are, that there are people, a lot of these plans, which people pay every single month towards their student loans, and the number gets higher. Like normally when you pay loans, 
you think you're paying down your loans and that your balance is getting lower and lower. But these are set up in such predatory ways that sometimes people pay for years on end and then end up with a higher balance and owing more. Make that make sense to me. And that's why these student debt cancellations are so impactful. And, you know, I, I hope President Biden, you know, continues. I know it was a big pro uh, promise of his and that Republicans, once again, have been trying at every single level trying to stop all progress on this um, because they want those tax cuts from Donald Trump. That's what we see nonstop. Look, I like that President Biden is spending every day talking about policy and putting forward a clear vision. Now, when you put forward a clear vision, you can disagree with the vision. You could have debates about, you know, is this the right way to address student debt relief? Is this the right way to deal with this? But President Biden's not out there posting videos in kind of bizarre, dystopian, nightmarish voices, you know, saying that it's a good thing to be compared to Hitler. He's not putting out, you know, all caps posts whining and ranting and raving about, you know, whatever the latest grievance is on any specific day. No, President Biden saying, look, my job is to work for you, the American people. Here are my set of principles. Here are my set of policies. Here's what I'm doing when it comes to infrastructure. Here's what I'm doing when it comes to jobs, real tangible, specific things. Here's what I'm doing when it comes to protecting veterans, to protecting seniors, to protecting social security, to protecting health care and making health care more affordable and accessible, reducing the prices. Here are my sets of principles and policies that I'm implementing every day because I don't work for me. This isn't about me. This is about you. This is about we, the people. This is about the United States of America. And here's what I'm going to do. That is what a campaign is supposed to be about. I don't want to ever lose sight of that. You know, I, I read a uh, opinion by a uh, Ronald Reagan appointee, a senior judge sitting in the federal courthouse in the District of Columbia, who's been a federal judge since 1987. He was, and it's, it's one of the videos that are posted on our feed that we released a few hours ago. And the judge said, you know, this is not normal. This cannot be made normal. Referring to the praise and the idolization of January 6th insurrectionists who the MAGA Republicans call hostages and sing songs with, and Donald Trump's change the national anthem um, and sings the song with the J6 hot with the J6 insurrectionists who he calls, you know, Donald Trump and the J6 hostages. And I think about those words when the judge said it in this, it was a sentencing memorandum. Um, and the judge said, This is not normal. This cannot be made normal. It's a Ronald Reagan appointed judge. And that's one of the things and one of the messages we always have here on the show is that the behavior and what the Republican Party has become is not normal. This can not become normal. And we all need to unite under the pro-democracy banner. We need to set aside some of our political differences um, for the sake of our democracy. We need to come together and we need to call out this MAGA threat. And we also need to call out the media for normalizing the MAGA threat. And we need to build together our own foundation and framework that grows bigger than what the media is doing for us to make sure that all of our voices are heard. So we thank you, Midas Mighty. None of this is possible without you. We're grateful for you. Check out patreon.com slash Midas Touch for the after show today. We'll be doing a uh, live Zoom after show in the next few weeks. So make sure you sign up so you get notice of the live show. Every day, let's keep working. I feel the momentum. I feel good where we are right now as a pro-democracy community, but we need to make sure we brick by brick every day, keep building together, and we will make sure that we protect, preserve, and defend our democracy. Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty! The Midas Mighty standing strong Against the fascists we sing our song We will get it right whenever 
It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks, Midas Mighty. Let's use our power well.